live. Hi guys, how are you? I'll just wait to see if anybody chimes in. Um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot not going on, a lot of changes. So just to go over before I start doing some of my video reviews, by the way, today's video reviews will be for Jennifer, for Jen, for Amanda, and for Rakia. So we've got four uh, munchkins that we're going to review. Um, as always, if I've missed you, I'm sorry. As always as well, um, some of you, you know, um, there's work that needs to be done that needs to be worked with. And this is where I'm um, trying to do a lot more online. Uh, we're all in a difficult situation. We all no longer have national borders. We're all in the same boat. The boat is, first of all, for the munchkins. There's no way you're going to get into a developmental pediatrician or any specialist of any form due to the virus. It's going to be very difficult to see a specialist. I really want extra care on the group, please. Um, uh, someone made the comment saying, you know, again, which is very typical, my child didn't do it, they were fine. I don't care if it's me or anybody else. Uh, for anyone to offer advice for a child that they have never seen so much as a video, not a picture, a video, and understands movement, the advice is, is taken, but it's not received. Um, please don't let anyone compare a child to a child. I can't stress enough that children are so individual, but at the same time, when it comes to development, should be so very similar, especially a baby, a young child. Um, at six months of old, you should not hear of any deviations, right? They're just six months, and they're dealing with movement, movement within gravity. This is, this is my specialty. I can tell if a baby's off the first hour of birth. I'm not looking to fault the child, I'm looking to help the child. Once in a while, we all need help. And especially now when you have a concerned parent, we really just all have to be special in the group to offer that help. That being said too, all of us are no longer getting services, right? Schools have closed, we're not getting services whatsoever, um, or very limited. Um, and I don't know if that's gonna change, especially if a lot of services were done um, in a center-based service. Um, we might be getting back to work, that doesn't mean that they are going to allow outpatient services, it doesn't mean they're gonna allow in-home services, it doesn't mean they're going to allow, we have no idea. For that reason, uh, Movement Lesson has been switching, not switching, but offering a lot of online courses. We have tons already set up, tons of videos. Um, and because I was supposed to just come back actually on Sunday from the United Kingdom, uh, we went with segment one online. Uh, it was amazing. The group is still going strong. We do a three-week uh, training online. Uh, we're finishing up the last of the three weeks. It has been phenomenal. Because of that, um, we are also scrambling with very short notice. We are doing the boot camp once again. Um, I have a good seven day boot camp that I do for nine days in total, right? So there's a boot camp, it starts April 25th. The sign in is available, the link will be down below. Please, what I'm offering with the boot camp, not that you can miss segment one, but it's starting to do movement lesson training at home if you're hearing from friends and family. I need to know that you've taken the boot camp and I might or I probably will consider letting you in for segment two. That doesn't mean you can bypass segment one. You really should have it in sequence. This will be the last time now that it's all going online that will be offered out of sequence. Um, I'm now in discussions now too because it went so well is to translating the entire sessions into Russian. Um, I do have a training going on in Russia right now. However, Again, noticing that we are not getting therapy of any sort for our children. Um, I am scrambling right now to look into translations and going on with that. I don't have dates yet. Don't hit me with that one. We've just started talking about it. Um, because it's not easy for some countries to accept online internet. There's going on and on and on. But um, it really was a very effective training. So, so watch the group for, for me postings. Another thing, I have a subscription site. I have over a thousand videos on the subscription site, but a lot of people like the courses, and that's why I'm doing courses. How to touch, how to do this, one, two, three, four. Um, I'm more of a, oh, let's try this today, let's do that today. And that's how I started with a lot of my stuff. I'm not ADD, it's like I see, I present, I just did a lesson. Oh, we just lost the camera. Oops. I think our battery died. Yeah, the battery died. All good, we'll go to manual. 
So I have a subscription site. What I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to start doing another live Facebook or webinar kind of thing through the Facebook, but I'm going to be posting a new uh, tw two videos or so a week. I want to start doing the um, the subscription site more. So we're going to start off with working with the head and vision. Um, so if you are on the subscription site, it'll it'll just be loading up. It'll help you work with the subscription site better. Um, it is $10 a month or $75 for the year, but again, it's literally like over a thousand videos, newborn assessments. I have a whole three-day course on foundations and touch. There's so much wealth on that, that website. It's just that people, again, are getting more and more. Tell me what to do for my child. We're here to improve movements. Any video, whether I do it on an adult or a child, you will benefit from it. Um, but, but again, so we'll be working on that. So there's a lot going on. Um, anything we can do to help you, let us know. Leave us your comments. Put it up there. Um, you know, uh, it's that we're about helping meet each other. Um, that being said, I'd like to talk about uh, Jennifer. Uh, your daughter, I know, has a rare genetic condition. Again, this is where I think I come into play. Um, Despite the rare genetic conditions, we have to look at the way that person is processing movement. And one of the things is that I mentioned is that she has a very, very, very heavy head. Um, uh, your daughter has a heavy head, and I'll be talking about a different situation with Amanda. But Amanda, please listen to this uh, as well um, with the head. Just hold it manually if you want. That's, That's okay. We'll swing it. Um, fancy gears take batteries, so we had this motion stabilization. Um, it could be the epilepsy, it could be the nystagmus. Now one of the things was interesting is that you mentioned is you didn't have nystagmus originally. I actually think it's muscle fatigue due to the weight of the head. So now I'm going to get down on the table. When she's moving, and what I'm talking about, it's almost like the head is an anchor, for lack of a better word. She is here and she's moving and trying to do everything she can, even over to this position, right? It's like someone's got her head down like this, right? And, and that's where I'm talking about a heavy head. Typically in development, the head movement goes with your pubic bone, right? And it's synchronized, right? That's what you're starting to see. When the head is, is heavy, right? So now I've got to do all of this. What also what happens is when the head starts pressing into the ground, and, and this is where I'm going into my cranial course, the eyes just stress, like if you all can do it, if you go lying down and you push down into the ground, right? Right now I can't see you because my eyes are actually being pulled apart because I'm going into the skull, more so when I have soft tissue still being young. So here I can talk to you and here see I can move and my head synchronizes with all of those kind of things. She literally is, is here. So I have a, two courses. One is the Head and Vision, which is a paid course. It's gonna be different than the one that we're gonna be doing on the subscription site. I could do this subject all day long, and this is why I have a cranial series coming out. But the, I would actually do the Head and the Swallowing. You might say, oh, but she doesn't have swallowing issues. The epilepsy, the nystagmus, the pressure that she's getting into the head, and with with the, her condition with the glycophene, um, and, and, and going on with that, I would really, that would be a very good touch, uh, a course for you to work on, specifically to help her. Um, it really covers a lot of, of organization and balance and function within the head. I, I think it would really be benefit, um, and I'll list the link below. Irina has a question. Okay. Uh, you reviewed my video last week and I, start, I started to do movement lesson with him. He has nystagmus and you tell me to work on his head and vision. What can I do to help him grab, open the hand and grab an object? He is six months. Okay, again, the hand and the object, first of all, um, a quickie, because again, I'm doing this out of memory. When you are here and there is nystagmus going on, he did not get his first milestone, which is what I call as the absolute horizon. He's doing this for balance, right? It's going to become more involved because you can't stay balanced, 
right? If I put you on a skateboard, you can't stay balanced, but at the same time, now have fine motor skills. It's when I organize my balance better, my hands open up. This is where people confuse and want to go here with the hands. He's got to get better balance through his vestibular. His eyes don't even allow that to happen, and that's what happens with the nystagmus. He doesn't have a, an absolute. He doesn't have a horizon. He doesn't have it here in his system, just structurally due to the nystagmus, and he certainly doesn't have it in his vision. Right? Again, like I'm talking about coming here. See how my hand wants to float. Right? That's what brings the hands out. See, I have balance. But if I literally feel like I'm on a boat, and I have motion sickness, right? That's not the time where you're going to get someone to play a piano. It's the same concept. We need to stabilize the system. Despite the nystagmus, this is where you have to do, they're, they're little, they're simple, and they might seem boring for parents, but these gentle little movements that, that in those baby videos are just great. They're all free um, to stabilize his system. That's what brings out the hands. That's what starts to go into that crossing midline and so forth. But if this continues, yes, this is where we need to get aggressive because he'll protect his, uh, he'll protect his balance, right, before he goes into skills. So breathing, balance, and swallowing are what the system will protect first. So if balance is one of his things, we need to know that he's got balance, but we need to show that in his system, right? And this is where we have to really work on those. That's where movement lesson really is, is great and comes into play, these great little movements to help. Um, I'm crawling again. Uh, Jen, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I realize that the surgeries are off now uh, to help with the uh, strabismus and so forth uh, due to the, the virus situation. And we don't know on an on update what's going to be happening. Um, is still what's going on and you guys are getting the tooth shot. When I come up, and again, what I just did, my eyes need to be able to do it. So if I have astigmatism, this is where you see or strabismus of coming in and again, a more laborious act, right? Again, my eyes can rotate, so can my tush, and I come up. What is happening is he's not bearing weight on the knees. Right? So when he's crawling, it's still almost like an ice skate, right? Part of that, again, is the eyes coming down. The head is down because, again, if the eye wasn't coming in, then I have upper quadrant vision and my crawl looks different. When I have upper quadrant vision, again, I can rotate in, I can rotate up, I can come around, you know what I mean, and come back down again. All of that is neutral. Um, so despite what's going on, especially when you're patching, um, there's videos are a bit more advanced going in, but it's the pubic bone into that knee relationship to getting that, that encouraged to be working on. So again, he has more of a knees to st stand on and then turning into more of a legs to stand on. But his vision is throwing off the vestibular system and that's what's, what's making him look weak. It's not the hypotonia. Um, really, if we improve his vision, we're going to improve a lot more of what's going on in his system. But again, when, when he has a bad relationship to where he is in space, it's showing up in the knees, and that's what I would be working on with him. Um, Amanda. Amanda, I get it, you have a genetic condition, right? But in the genetic condition that you have, the head growth was extremely fast. Um, this goes into my comments when, when people go, why isn't my child rolling over? Um, excuse me. So, when an infant's head is, is first born, right? These bones, the subluxation happens all over the place. They create transitional milestones. Right? So if the temporal bone and the parietal, you don't need to know anatomy, don't have that relationship, this is where sitting up gets involved. These are things you're going to be learning in, in my cranial class. But in, in your son's case, right, when you have a, an extended amount of growth, right, there's a heaviness that happens, right? It changes the equilibrium. Um, one of the things you will also notice in rolling over, and this is why it's meant to happen, guys, at two and a half to three months of level, uh, because the, the relationship of the jaw to the cheek creates a roll. 
right? If you look at an adult skull, the relationship of my jaw to my cheekbone, right? We're looking at a substantial difference. As a child grows, including the head, so do their developmental movements. So just in his case, when he does have a, a higher head, a heavier head, right? This changed the dynamics within the bones. The bones create the movements. People don't really realize that. They think the movement is cognitive based. They think it's muscle based, right? But our skeletal system is really key on creating our transitional milestones, right? So when you have, in his case again, similar but different heavy head, so he has a smaller jaw in relationship, the more the heart-shaped face where the head is here. But again, first of all, the dynamics of, of where my eyes are with my ears versus is from here, right, just in the shape of my head, right? So now look at where my head is in relationship to my spine, it curves it. So rolling over again, trying to do that around that head this is where, again, you're going to come in with the course I suggested and really work on the dynamics of the head so he starts feeling like, in a sense, it's more in proportion. It's the proportions that bring you up to sitting and coming back down again. See, I'm not using my muscles. This, I'll never sit up. You guys can all try it. Grab your knees, grab your legs. If that head is back, I'm never going into sitting. It has nothing to do with being high tone, low tone, right? I see a ball, I see a light, I literally just rise to the occasion and I'm up. I get it, some muscles will be involved, but I'm not using a crunch, I'm not using any of these skills, and I get up, and I can be right here, and I can come back again, right? And I can work around you. So that's what I would work on first, is trying to balance out the, the weight of his head, because the next step is his head is heavier than the pelvis. So what I just did there, as you can see with me, my pelvis is heavier than my head. That helps me rise up. This is why babies have big abdomens. This is why I have a big abdomen. I'm a big baby, right? So that relationship is there. But when the head is heavier, right, and the legs seem a little, but again, it's just more the proportion of the weight. And this is where um, you might actually find it easier to teach him how to come up through his belly and then up into sitting that way, just based off of that dynamics. But that's where I would work on with him. Um, and Raquel, um, uh, I would like to say again, um, I know you have concerns for your baby, and thank you for being here. Um, when you put it out on, on Facebook, you're, you're here to get help at the same time again. Just be careful when people are saying, oh, my kid do that, or my son did that. We, we don't know. And, and each child is different. So with your daughter, one of the reasons why she's not rolling over, um, she's, she's, she's not, none of her system has rotation or crossing midline. So what does that mean? So she's just a wee little baby. Now I know you're putting her on tummy time, right? But notice how she's just same, same, right? What I'm looking for, first of all, is for like just what I'm doing here, just even to look to the side. Now, she can't do that, nor could she do something like this. Because why? This, the spine has to cross midline. So wherever my eyes go, my tush will counter. My eyes go, my tush will counter, right? And that's what, and that's a crawl. Right now, we're just getting this until she either gets tired, I'm sure you just find her asleep, or she just stresses out and starts to cry, right? In lying down, the reason I asked about torticollis, because again, six months old, there should be more engaging, again, looking like a crawl in lying down, versus is here. Um, it's not her energy, but her momentum is just definitely off. She's not synchronizing the movements together. Um, and so she, it's, it's showing not that she's weak, but she doesn't really have the power, right? There's, there's, there's again, there's a, I'm teaching this now as I'm doing segment two. People don't realize there's a momentum of going up just as much as a momentum of going down. It should be equal, even though we have ascending and descending. Right? And she is not learning those milestones. This is why I'm sure you can't even put her in sitting. Um, and, and she's not even there, even close to coming to sitting. Um, I really want to get aggressive. Uh, uh, I would really like to offer uh, 
If you need to Skype, we'll set up a consultation where you have an hour of me, but I would really look at the newborn assessment. I know she's not a newborn, but that'll give you, show you more of, of what she's doing or not doing. And then again, every touch, every movement you make with her, we've got to just get that middle, that stimulate those functional movements. Um, and this is why she's probably not even holding, if anything, she's holding something like this. But, but at this age, she should be interacting. The hands should have come together by now. Even you see her grabbing the feet. But what should have happened by at least four and a half months is this, um, where she's actually pushing and pulling. Because again, this will get you up to sitting, right? These kind of skills. And again, that rolling over, see that has power to it. And, and, and that, this is where she should be, um, not planking, but where her pubic bone is here and she's got airplane. You should not be using words that she'll eventually get an arm stuck in tummy time. At six months old, that is just not a skill level where she should be at. Okay, we have a question okay, from Christina. Is there an age limit to learning to crawl? No, there's not an age limit with learning to crawl. It's something that can, anybody can do. I can work on it. However, there's a skeletal maturation that you have to deal with when you're working on crawl. Um, really, we should not be crawling at two years old or so forth because our knees are not made for it anymore. So when you see me rolling around, I'm on three inches of foam on my table. If I had to do this on concrete, or if you've ever lost a child at a McDonald's playland, you'll quickly know what I realize, our knees are not made for it anymore. So when you're working with a child, this is where I like to see a video. I need to know where they are functioning within their movements. Um, did their femoral head start to straighten out? Do they have scissoring? You know, there's so many questions going into that. But what's nice about also with movement lesson is I can be working again, like I just mentioned, working on the foundations of crawling without even having to get someone in my my on off floors so i can be working on them because that's what's great about the brain is if you offer the right movement the brain thinks it's crawling right so that's another way you can look at it so um it's a loaded question but at the same time no i can be working on my crawling skills you can see high-end ballerinas they have a gorgeous crawl like a jaguar that they go into um, it could always be worked on, but but to, to just say someone to go crawl when again they're socially mature as well that that even though they might not doing it physically, I've met plenty of kids that they could be lawyers or six years old, you know what I mean, and they're too socially mature to even consider crawling because even though that that's something you want, I know it helps with reading and writing and working on a bicycle. Um, short story: I worked with a girl from South Africa who was prevented from crawling. And she came to me when she was six. She could have sold ice to Eskimos, Danielle. And uh, she, uh, she, she didn't, she, reading, writing, she couldn't use scissors. Scissors was a big one. Again, that crossing midline. And I knew within three seconds, I still was just training with all of this. And uh, I was like, this girl's never crawled. And they're like, how did you know that? And, and again, you know, by the third lesson, she's looking at me and she's like, you're touching my butt. And I said, you finally know you have a butt. Um, she had a total of nine lessons. She could ride a bike when she was done, cut scissors, she could do all of this. I never put her into crawling. I just worked on skills that were a part of crawling or movement skills. And Irina, thanks so much. If I buy the course, will it help my baby six steps to improve head and vision functions? Uh, yeah, I really like those two courses. Um, listen, if it doesn't help you or, or that's not your thing, I mean, you can always get your money back. That's that's not a thing. But but at the same time is is that 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 the head and the vision course, uh, uh, the vision and the head and the swallowing, really deal with some nice head work. You might have to work with your child when they're sleeping. Not all kids want to be messed with with the head, um, especially if they've had medical trauma. But there really are some great courses, um, very good step by step, uh, that that take people through these kind of um, movement difficulties. Mm -hmm. Okay, dope guys. Uh, again, it's a lot. Uh, I really please. It's April 25th, the link will be below, do the boot camp. It is free, it is nine days. I'll be extra supportive on the Facebook group. Um, it is a wonderful course, it'll take you through. And what's nice about it, everyone's like, I'm getting this. No, you're actually practicing. A lot of this work is, don't let a, a video be intimidating. 
um, start with some, some easy ones, but just this touch. If you work with a gentle touch with rotation, every move I just did on this table included rotation. Whether you're feeding yourself, turning a page, if I'm lifting my foot up and going around and working on these kind of skills, I have functional rotation, right? And so it, it, it really is, a movement lesson I find is, I think it's quite easy to do. It might seem more overwhelming because I've been at it now for a dozen or so years. So there's a lot of videos out there. There's something out there to help your child. Please do the boot camp. It is free. Tell people that aren't even doing movement lesson. It's going, we're in lockdown, we're in quarantine. There are kids around the world right now that aren't getting services, right? Movement lesson is here to help you. Uh, I don't want any more kids being having special needs, and especially this where kids are going to be falling through the cracks because of lack of school, or people aren't even set up to homeschool. That's a whole other <laughs> can of worms. And um, we all need to just be supportive and helpful, and hopefully um, I'm helping you guys out. So thanks, guys. Um, can't thank you enough. We'll be doing this again, and uh, I might actually start to two a week. Um, so look forward to the announcements. Thank you.